Critical race theory is not being taught in schools. There is no public school teacher who is attempting to put critical race theory in schools. Critical race theory is a subject because the Republican right has made it a subject. Can it influence the way that some teachers teach? Uh, yeah, but that's a good thing, right? Critical race theory is an ideology. It's a philosophy. And in this philosophy, there's a single premise. And this premise is that there has been a hierarchy of human value that has been race-based in society. And we all know that, and I accept, that there have been many injustices based on race. But what this model is putting forward is that the solutions to any kind of injustice that we have must be a new hierarchy of human value in which we basically put certain races ahead of other races and we put certain identities ahead of other identities in order to get rid of this systemic racism issues and, in, and inequities that they try to attribute to all of a society. Their approach is very superficial, it's simplistic, it's actually very patronizing to many of us who kind of fit into that hierarchy of racial values in very complicated ways, and um, ultimately it's dehumanizing. Critics of those who oppose critical race theory often say that those who oppose it can't even define it. This is one of many tactics used to try to shut down debate on the topic. So let's use their definition from a widely popular book by Richard Delgado and Jean Stefanczyk called Critical Race Theory and Introduction. The critical race theory movement is a collection of activists and scholars engaged in studying and transforming the relationship among race, racism, and power. In the same book, there's a section called Spinoff Movements, which states that although CRT began as a movement in the law, it has rapidly spread beyond that discipline. So the truth is that many critical race theorists want their ideology to be absorbed by the public without anyone knowing the origins of their ideas. It's not simply some obscure legal discipline with no influence outside law schools. Again, according to their own work, they state that, unlike some academic disciplines, critical race theory contains an activist dimension. It tries not only to understand our social situation, but to change it. Here, Delgado echoes the famous formula by Karl Marx, which serves as the epitaph on Marx's tombstone. The philosophers have only interpreted the world in various ways. The point, however, is to change it. I now started working with an organization called Parents Defending Education, and I've started mapping all of the incidents of critical race theory that are happening in school districts around the country, and I just can't even keep up. This thing is spreading to uh, high school and even lower, to middle school and elementary school. And there, there are demands to amend the curriculum to a point where I think we are going to have for the next generation miseducated, misinformed kids. Mathematics is declared to be racist now. Science is declared to be racist. Children are separated along the lines of their skin color. When you divide students by color and say that the light-skinned students are oppressors and the dark-skinned students are oppressed, are you anti-racist or are you fully racist? Teaching children to be anti-racist and against bigotry is something, of course, everybody is in favor of. That is to say, we're against bigoted attitudes and racist attitudes. The question is how they teach it and what they assume about people. White privilege is when people who are white have additional benefits, advantages, and fewer barriers to overcome than people of color. It means that you have extra privileges just because of the color of your skin. Really? Yes, really. So remember, we all have bias, and this might be the uncomfortable part, is realizing, oh, I might have done a microaggression and didn't even realize I was doing that. When people say critical race theory is being taught in K-12 through systems, it's not being taught as a subject. That is, no one says, let's look at what people who identify themselves as critical race theorists have to say. They're teaching it in the same way that a church teaches doctrine. It's pretty much taken just as a given. It's the lens through which you see everything. So students really don't have an idea that they're getting something that's debatable. It's not something they see, it's something they see with. I have here a pile of books that I have purchased because these are books that are being sold and read to our children and our 
K through 12 school system, books like Not My Idea, What Lane, What We Believe, the Black Lives Matter coloring book is now in curriculum all across the country. And in it, it challenges the idea of parents and says that we now have to bring in, quote, villages in order to raise our children. But what they are doing in this new critical race theory movement is they are trying to hijack parenting. They are trying to take away parental rights in the school systems. There are so many parents who love their children and are losing their children to these ideologues because one of the key strategies is to shame parents, to say, oh, this is a conversation your parents may not want to talk about. Oh, your parents may be uncomfortable about this. So it creates this antagonism already with the child and the parent. And all of my friends who have survived communist China, they say they're quite familiar with these tactics from the Cultural Revolution. They grew up with these tactics. They survived these tactics. They watched their cousins turn in their parents. It's something that so traumatizes them as they witness it unfolding in America. And so what is this? I mean, this is a very, very dangerous mission to destroy the very fabric of America, the very fabric of liberal America, you know, the very fabric of progressive America. One of their books explicitly states that their goal is to question the very foundations of the liberal order, including equality theory, legal reasoning, enlightenment rationalism, and neutral principles of constitutional law. So it's clear that these activists have an agenda that would reasonably trouble most Americans. Most people in this country, regardless of their political orientation, are sensitive to the fact that racism does indeed exist. And every reasonable person thinks that the history of racism in this country is a shameful one, and that our children should learn about that history. However, what's now being taught in colleges, and even in many K-12 schools, is that all of our structures and systems are still racist, and that all white Americans are complicit in that racism. We are told by the people who speak in woke and woke philosophy that everything about this country, all its structures, all its systems are bad and oppressive and that there's only one way out and that is to bring everything down. Everything has to be dismantled, destroyed, the statues have to come down, the curriculum, the social sciences, the liberal arts, everything has to be gotten rid of and something new is going to be put in its place. It's not always clear what that is, but the destructive nature inherent in this Wog philosophy, the nihilism, is quite clear and, and alarming. This is going to come to every dining table in every home in America. This is going to come to every university, every school, every workplace. And so you have to educate yourself. We all have to educate ourselves. I have to educate myself. And then really reflect deeply on our moral values and then act on it. I think one thing people can do is to let other people know that they too are for social justice. They too are anti-racist and to insist on that point. Because the problem is people have taken over these terms and infused them with a particular ideology so that to say that you're for social justice for them automatically means that you subscribe to a very partisan and in some ways very doctrinal set of views. Whereas social justice is in fact a aim that we should all be striving for. But the woke do not use social justice in that way and don't understand it that way. It's co-opted to serve as a means for their theology to recruit people into the cult and once they're in the cult, to keep them in. It's very difficult to challenge the propaganda pushed by critical race theorists because it acts like a dogmatic orthodoxy. It is resistant to argumentation due to the fact that it tries to demonize reason and the scientific method as social constructs created by white men. The best thing people can do is look for telltale signs of this ideology and understand what to do when they see them. In addition to the books Osra mentioned, we should be on the lookout for certain words like diversity, equity, and inclusion, and inquire about what these words mean. How is equity defined? Does diversity and inclusion mean including people with diverse beliefs? We should also look out for a few key things. Are schools segregating people by race? Are they teaching that white people are inherently privileged or worse, that they are oppressors and students of color are oppressed? 
Is your company forcing quotas to achieve equity? Do they mandate implicit bias training? Aside from asking these questions, I recommend that people read the source material, like the introduction to critical race theory, and then seek out arguments against it just as we would do with any other theory. A recent book that is very helpful for parents is a book by Bonnie Kerrigan Snyder, who has worked for FIRE, the Foundation for Individual Rights in Education, for many years. And she's written a really wonderful book that's very coherently and cogently organized that's really a, a kind of handbook for parents, explaining really everything you need to know about um, how to find out what your school is doing and the mechanisms you can use to uh, make a real difference in your child's education. For parents who are concerned about what's happening in their schools, the first thing to do is to show up at school board meetings. Um, it's a difficult thing to do. Parents are very busy. They have jobs. They have a million things going on. But there are organizations that can really help. And one of them is the Foundation Against Intolerance and Racism, which has chapters all over the United States. And you can find online and join. Everyone can use their voice and their, uh, their profession and their talent uh, to come at it from different places. So if you're a politician, then you're in the business of legislating and allocating resources. And so that's where you need to focus on. If you're a teacher in a school or a school board, that's where you should be on the lookout to make sure that this thing doesn't infiltrate and it doesn't seep into the curriculum and where it has to, to get it out. Uh, if you're a parent, I'm a parent. I think it's very important for parents, especially, to wake up to this and uh, to organize and to protect their children. We must ensure that our children get the education they need and are not indoctrinated into a worldview that conflicts with our own. In order to do this, it's good to be aware of some key tactics that are used by proponents of critical race theory to quell dissent. One of the most common is for them to call anyone a racist who opposes CRT. So we have to have thick skin and not let this name calling dissuade us. It's also often claimed that banning CRT is itself an act of systemic oppression. And if that tactic is used, it's good to point out that there is biracial and bipartisan support for banning CRT in our schools. Another tactic is to shame people by saying that those who oppose CRT simply don't want the history of racism taught to children. To that, we can counter by saying that we do want the history of racism taught, along with the positive achievements this country has made in moving toward a fairer and more just society. For more useful tools, check out Peter Boghossian's book, How to Have Impossible Conversations, which has many helpful tips on how to speak with ideologues. And for articles that will help you better understand and counter CRT, go to James Lindsay's website, newdiscourses.com. It's very likely that wherever we challenge critical race theory, that activists will try to smear our names and reputations, but we must not let that discourage us. This is becoming a war to them, and we have to have moral courage in it and Remember that as we challenge them, like we remain true to our North Star of a progressive, just society where people are equal and we honor each other's humanity. Like we remember that as we embark on this struggle because we never want our intentions to fall by the wayside, right? We want our intentions to remain noble and transcendent always. And, and that's what I encourage people to do is Wake up each day with noble, transcendent intention and get ready to fight in the trenches. Mm -hmm.